Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome back to the channel. Right now, I'm sitting in my $850 supercharged Range Rover, and I gotta say, it's a really nice place to be. But there's something that's been bothering me since I got the truck. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So from the beginning, I've known that the touchscreen on the navigation unit doesn't work. And that means I don't have access to a bunch of things like the touch buttons, which luckily works with mode here. I haven't had access to navigation, which is out of date, so it's not a huge deal. And I haven't been able to access any of the settings or any of the audio settings. So today we're going to fix that. To remove this and replace it, since I got a part off the parts truck, I have to remove this panel. Simple enough, right? Well, not exactly. The way Land Rover designed this, you have to remove the registers. Not a huge deal. Registers over there and the panels they're mounted in. The speaker grill. You have to disconnect the airbag. But to disconnect the airbag, you have to remove the upper glove box. And to remove the upper glove box, you have to remove the lower glove box. And to remove the lower glove box, you have to remove the scuff plate, that panel, and this panel here. So it's, it's going to be a process, but it'll be a really nice fix. And it'll be really nice to have the touchscreen back. So let's get to it. Now the first thing we're gonna do since we're gonna disconnect the airbag later is disconnect the battery. So right here, disconnect the negative battery terminal. No. Oh. Now to remove this panel, we're using a T20 Torx bit. And there's a screw back here. Let me show you. A little washer on it. And then we can pull clips out here. These are partially already out. You can see here is one there and one there at least, and then like little tabs that line it up. Now over here, the scuff plate, you probably want to use a, a trim tool or yank it up. Mine's already loose, but it'll pull up. Mine's actually loose because you can see the clips have bent out of shape, but they will clip into these white guides there. Actually, there's a fourth one right here that's separated from the scuff plate. Yeah, they're supposed to pop in here, here, and here, and here. Wow, this one is... I don't know what that is. Someone's been here before. I'll probably take the opportunity to vacuum this before I put it back together, but... Oh, and you can see it also slides into these catches. Next is this panel. So this panel right here, I'm gonna grab it and pull backwards here. You can see there's red clips here and here, and those go into these slots. Pull that back and we're out of the way. Now, before I disconnect the battery, I realized I forgot to open the rear, the lower glove box, and then pop the top one open too for later, which as you can see is a little damaged, but not a huge deal. So we're gonna re-disconnect the battery now that this is open, and we'll keep moving. Now we have to remove the trim panel down here, which I believe is also T20. Yep, there's one screw here. And one screw over here. I think maybe one more right there. Two. Yeah, three. Okay. And there's a uh, connector for the lamp here. What's all this blue stuff? Jeez. Okay, that is out. And keep our screws safe. Next, we have to remove the trim panel here so we'll be able to access the rest up here. You can see here, see on the left in there, there on the bottom, and then up here a little higher, there's two clips. And then same thing on the other side, they're a little harder to see. You can kind of make them out there right here 
and right here. So you have to you have to pull them back in very carefully. So what I'm gonna do is use a pick and reach in, gently pull it back. So what we're gonna do is reach in, pull it over. You wanna be gentle because you don't wanna break it. And we have to release it and this whole thing will slide out. Go. Now there's a little, it's a little connector in here. Okay, that is out. That is good. Now we have to remove this panel here. And this panel is held in with a few screws. We've got one here, one here. Now these are T25s. A little bit bigger. Let's see. And we also need to remove this panel here. So we're gonna pop that out with just reaching in here. That should, that should just be clipped in, so. We'll seal out a bit. Okay, we have a couple clips here, so. This panel comes off. You can see a couple of the clips stayed in the in here. And get those back out. Probably have to use a trim tool. There is another screw right here for the panel. There's also a T25. Okay. And now we can pull this forward and out. So with that trim panel removed, the register trim panel, we can pull the glove box out of it. Okay. Yep. So for service position, this catch comes out of here. So you push it sideways a little bit there and it'll release. We'll do it again. You see here, grab that, push it slightly over carefully and it'll drop down. Now, once that's done, we have eight screws holding it in. T20s again, two screws back here four up top and then two on the bottom. So let's see them down here, one here. Start with that. Now right here, there's a couple of <clears throat> connectors to release. And then down here, there's another connector for the lamp. All right. For the upper glove compartment, we want to remove the two screws here and here for the CD changer. And then up top, we have this panel here we have to remove. And for that, there is one screw right here and then three clips that hold that in. I'm not sure which side they come off. Let me see. Oh, there's one here, one here, and one here. Whoa, that's in tight, huh? So there's three clips here, here, and here, and they go in here, here, and here. Just pull straight out. Now there's just three screws up here to remove. Still T20. Now we can pull this out. We have a few connectors. You slide this forward, let something catch you. It gets the CD changers catching on something. That help maybe? Yeah. 
as we pull this forward, we have got a connector right here. And the CD changer connector right here. This should be everything. If you had the camera connector, that would be in here too. So now we have to disconnect the airbag connector, which is right here. And that's why our battery is disconnected. That is attached to the underside of this. So let's see. Okay, connectors on this side. There we go. And we have to remove the two bolts here and here. 10. Now we have to remove this panel here. There we go. Because we have a couple of screws in there, which we'll get to later. And we have to remove the registers here. So let's try to understand. These are a little broken. Maybe I can re reattach the, I don't know. We'll see when this comes out. But I think it's a couple clips here and a couple there. I think it may even be, it's two on one side, three on the other. The two clips closest to the windshield can be released from inside the vent, kind of like the passenger side vent we removed earlier. The bottom side has metal clips. Oh yeah, so there's a little hook here that popped out of the, the piece that guides them up and down. So I'll see what I can do with that later. On the driver's side, it's the same thing. Two on the inside, two on the outside. But this time when we remove the panel, there's also gonna be a connector for this. Again, there's a uh, connector here. Okay. Now we have to remove the side panel here. Okay, so we're gonna pull that back. I think that'll help a little bit. Pop this open. Now, same as before, we have one, two, uh, where's number three? Three, right here. Right there. Forward, you can lift up here a little bit. You just have to get that connector. This connector is a little cam lock. See the gray thing there? We'll have to push that over towards there. There we go. And that is everything we had to remove to finally access the upper panel. So next steps to remove the upper panel on the dash. And that is held in in a few places. We've got one screw here. We've got one screw here. We'll need to use a wrench. Got one here. Got one here and one here. We have one there and there. Then on the other side, same thing as here. We've got the one by the register, the one in the corner, and right there. So let's get started. Looks like T25. That's T27. The, the ones on the dash are a little bigger for decorative purposes, but everything else may be T25, yeah. Let's see. Okay, looks like all the T25s are probably this style and all the big ones are longer style. Okay, that should be everything here. Let's see. Okay, yeah, pull up. 
forward here. And we have a connector on the center speaker here. So we will have to be aware of that. Pull it forward, lift up. You can see the connector right there, the white thing. Okay. Ow. Okay. All right. Uh, you gotta figure out where to put this. I ended up putting it on the roof with the leather sides down. Now this connector here, there's two little tabs here. You can squeeze and pull it down. And to remove this unit, we've got one screw here, one screw here. And the other two are down there on both sides. Let's see if I can get a magnet. Up, forward. We have display connector here. We've got an antenna connector here in the middle. We get this connector out. This one has a latch on the side. Right there. All the way facing towards the bottom. This one has a latch on the top. There we go, there's that. And then this one here, latch on the outside there. All right. So this is our unit from the parts truck with a good touch screen. We'll need a little bit of a clean, but uh, we'll take care of that. And you can see right here, the connections are the same. So we'll be good to go. So you have to remove this from this frame. You'll notice this frame is a little different. It's because it's from 2006 and the dash is different. So we'll pop these out, remove the unit, Pop these screws out and swap it in here. This is also T25. Someone smoked in this car, in this the truck that this came out of, so things are a little grubby. That's nasty. That's so gross. Much better. That's on here. There we go. Excellent. The plugs, seam. They're the same. Okay, looks good. I have to decide, do I, let's just screw it in. Cause I don't want to test it with the airbag disconnected so I don't get an airbag light. I mean, I have the tools to reset it, but usually don't want to start, or you don't want to power on a vehicle without the airbags in cause the system will record it, say there's an airbag fault and you need a scan tool to re reset it. Oh. oh God, that's exactly what I wanted to avoid. Oh boy. All right, we'll take it back out. Be careful putting the lower screws back in because they can fall into the dash and it's a little hard to find stuff in there. Let's try again. <laughs> Or a bit of ta a tape, maybe? All right, let's get the dash back on so we can plug in the airbag. Ow, ow, ow. <clears throat> All 
The panel should slide into place towards the windshield. That's aligned, that's aligned, that seems aligned. Everything looks lined up now, so I'm gonna plug in the airbag since we're gonna test it. We're not gonna test the airbag, we're gonna test this. And if it works, we'll just leave it all set up. Okay. Next, we can reconnect the battery. Well, the screen powers on, which is good. That's a good sign. Let's see. Come on. Okay, let's see, let's try again. Just blinking, huh? That's not good. Nothing, huh? Okay. This is out of an older truck, maybe that's why. Also, I'm not sure if it needs other stuff to be connected. Plugged in the CD drive, and we'll see if that helps. That flashing is. Not flashing anymore. Yes! Yes! Ah! It works! Oh, <laughs> it thinks they have uh, multimedia because this, head, this unit comes out of one that had the rear seat entertainment. Let's see. took a little time to test all the sound controls and they work. <laughs> okay, uh, it is 2, 14, and our clock is set, which I've never been able to set before. And it is gonna stop. Boop. Yeah, all right. So I didn't know the CD changer was an integral part of this working. Yes. Awesome. Which means I can get back to putting things together. All right, so next we are putting all this back together. If you're wondering why I put this panel back on, it's because the lights were staying on without this plugged in, so I don't want to drain the battery. Okay for the grill up here. You'll notice it's not symmetrical, that this lip here goes towards the inside because that is, sits flat. So pop that down. I was actually able to fix these. The little guide on the side can be shifted left and right with a pick and slotted back onto the pins. That is great. This has got to go in. We've got, I guess the clips up here. So we're gonna try to get the top in first. Snap this. Okay, yeah, you have to make sure the ducts line up and I lost one of the clips so it's loose now okay let me see if I can find it so we have our whole top end done I actually found the last clip the other clip for the center register it's time to put the bolts and mount the airbag bracket back in um, now we can do the upper glove box okay so this is gonna be Disconnector for the light, disconnector for the CD drive. That lines up. This is still broken. I 
we'll probably fix it in place. We're back to T20s. Silver screws at the top. Two screws on the bottom. This harness here, it's clipped in here. There we go for the lower glove box. Now, need to put a trim panel here, which has a screw that goes there. Yeah, I'll fix that. <laughs> Okay, that's the upper glove box. Now we can do the lower glove box, which has the three connectors down here. Okay, I think I need to release this first. Yeah, unfortunately I let it settle and it locked up. So I gotta hold it in place. Maybe hit release if I can. There we go. Okay, I got the light. Oh, I put the bottom one in first. So this one will go to the panel down here. This wire here goes to the corner of the, this down here. Okay, and it hangs on there. On the bottom side, you want to make sure the tabs are aligned properly. If they're not, it can interfere with the glove box door and prevent screws from aligning correctly up top. Now I can put this back on. Notice this here. We'll have to hook over here a bit. Okay, we're back to T25 for these. One on the side. The register, don't forget to connect it. Um, and this just snaps in. Just wanna make sure this wiring doesn't get pinched or block the way. Let's see. Okay, that's on. Now we can do the side panel. Pull these clips out. Now they're back in. I used one of these tools, kind of get it in there and separate them. There we go. Pop this back in. All right. I guess we can finish on this side while we're here. Lower panel. We have one, two, and three screws to put in. Uh, I'm gonna go back to T20. Go. Excellent. These hook on there. Oops. There you go. That's pretty good. Next, we can put the driver's side register back in. See the little cam lock here. Push that down. Release it. Comes out. Plug it back in and pop it down. And it will lock back in there. There you go. So 
Same as the other side, we're gonna line up these tabs. That's in, and there we have it. These are back in place, which is nice. The touch screen works. Actually, let was double check. <laughs> You hear the CD changer going, heard the sound come on. And there we go. Awesome. That was actually really important. There's something we'll be doing in the future. So stay tuned to find out what that is. And with that, we have access to all the features and settings that were locked away behind the missing touchscreen. If you haven't seen the rest of the rebuild series for this truck, you can check out the playlist here and I'll leave a link in the video description. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos on this truck or want to watch me work on other cars, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.